want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you Hello YouTube, Steve O'Trucker here. Sorry for the excited start to this video. Today, I'm gonna to cover my top five big mistakes to avoid as a truck driver. Yes, I'm gonna do a top five for a change. I've actually written a list out this time as well. I actually remember to list out what I'm gonna be talking about. And let's kick it off with complacency. That's number one, complacency. Why complacency is number one? It's because it, it actually tied into a lot of these points to a certain degree. And what do I mean by complacency? Is overconfidence, thinking you know it all when you probably don't. It's a bit like if you drive down the road like a million times, you think you know every turn and corner and blind turn. And it's a bit like taking a blind turn you know really well, really fast, because you know, yeah, I'm getting the truck around at that speed. But eventually, you're going to get caught out, because somebody will be coming the other way one day. Certainty, as they would say. But it's just a general gist of, of complacency. Just try not to become complacent. Try and go through your drills. Even if you think it's pointless, just do it. Because the day you skip it, or the hundredth time that you skipped over this drill or thing, that'd be the time you get caught out. And you're going to probably see why complacency and overconfidence comes into the other areas. Next big point, number two. Using and relying on a car sat-nav. Big no-no. Do not use a car sat-nav. I would recommend strongly you do not use a car sat-nav. I know the frustration when you get into the industry as a new driver. You look at the cost of a truck sat-nav. Yes, it's expensive, but you've got to look at it as an investment into your job. It's a safety investment. Yes, you may get away with using a car sat-nav. I know truckers who do, but I wouldn't recommend it. And there's some very key safety points to it. Yes, you might be very switched on 99% of the time. And you might be aware that I shouldn't trust the sat nav fully because it might direct me underneath stuff that I should be going. I need to be observant. But be that one time that you either have a lapse in con concentration, you know, whatever may happen, and you rely on that sat nav and you didn't think twice, it just went out of your head one day for whatever reason it may have been, and you'll think it won't be you who does it, and it will be you who does it. And you go down that road with that low bridge, or you go down that road with a restriction of some sort down it that you must not be down on. Or you get trapped, or you get stuck, or you get yourself boxed in somewhere. You know, you don't want to be that driver. And the fact that having a truck sat nav, a Pacific one, aids to your job. And still, I must add here as a caveat, don't fully rely on your sat nav system, even if it's a dedicated system, the best one on the market. They can still go wrong. And this is where remaining observant to road signs, birds, <laughs> sorry, I had a few pigeons beside us threatening to go into the cab. <laughs> You know, and just being aware of what you're doing, the way you're going. Do your research, phone up, ask for directions. You no, know, all what I think is common sense stuff, but might not be to everybody. You know, and this will lead me on to another point a bit later on as well. What's the next one? I wonder. Number three not knowing your vehicle limits and capabilities. This is a big one, this one as well. So, not knowing your vehicle capabilities and limitations. So that means like your height of your vehicle, your width, 
your length, your overhangs. That's that's the first bit. Capabilities. How quick is it? You know, how quick does it go from a standstill up to speed sensibly? You know, how's it handle up a hill? You know, how's it handled down a hill? Do you know all the controls? That's another big one in that, is knowing how to operate your vehicle. How to operate it, what button does what. Don't be shy at the start of the day. Hopefully the truck will have the vehicle manual with it. Hopefully. Just having a little glimpse through the vehicle manual. It will show you what all the buttons will do. You know, it should tell you what the vast majority will do. And that's probably more aimed at the unexperienced side. I will do a general gist at the end as well. This, you know, these these things are for everybody, from the most experienced to the most novice driver. You know, you can become complacent, use the wrong equipment, not know your limitations when on week one or week one thousand. You know, doesn't matter. Uh, anything else at that point? I mean, capabilities, some of, and a lot of it will be built, and this is where I sound very contradictory, will come out of experience as well. So you'll learn how your arctic or your rigid will take certain turns. You'll be able to judge turns and go, I can't do that. Or go, actually, yes I can, but it will come out of experience. Don't be scared to get out and look and check if you're manoeuvring into a spot. No, don't be scared, don't be embarrassed. Nothing embarrassing, it's more embarrassing to mess up. Trust me, do not mess up. Also, knowing how to detach, you know, don't rush. That's the other key point within it. Just do not rush what you do. Take your time. It's not a race. Ignore your dispatcher. Crack on. Do your best. You know, don't let dispatcher or other people drive you. Or bully you. Don't take that the wrong way, you know, there's some employers out there who will drive you. I've touched upon this before. Um, number four, not doing your vehicle checks and not checking the vehicle during the day or lack of. Big point that is as well. I mean, all big points. And you might, and this is where complacency can come in quite heavily as well, you know. It's always tempting, certainly as a tramper, you know, you're in the vehicle for a week to skip over a vehicle check. It's half tempting half the time. You know, you wake up in the morning, it's not in the mood to walk around in the freezing cold, you know. But do it. It'll be that one time you skip over, you'll miss something really, really important. And this also falls upon not checking your vehicle during the day, because there's a chance you can miss something on, the, on your first vehicle check. But if you check it every stop, you know, you have just a general glance around the vehicle. I'm not meaning do a full MOT every time you stop. Don't, no. Just get out and, you know, when you stop to have your brake, just have a quick walk around your truck. You know, a you'd be surprised what a glance of your truck around or could pick up. Because as when you walk around the truck and go, oh, that doesn't look quite right. I'll have a little look-see at this one. So it's a bit like then, I saw, you know, if I went around there, of course, some drama. If I wait here, he's more likely to be able to get past me a little bit more easier. So yeah, so do your vehicle checks. It's, don't skip them. You know, it, you know it, 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 it sounds like a small thing, but it can lead to big things. And just through just a moment of laziness. And this leads me to number five. Number five. And this is a big point. Most afflicted to the novices. And to a degree to the experienced as well. But tends to be the novice drivers out there struggle this one. Is not asking. E.g. not asking for help. 
you know, ask other drivers, phone your dispatcher, phone your customer up, you know, you know, work in the order of common sense. If there's another driver, ask another driver for help. You know, especially if you're not too sure how to do something, you know, what you should do. Ask, if you get to a customer site and you're not too sure, ask at the front desk, say, oh, I'm a new driver, you know, what, where do you want me, what do you want me to do? You know, and 99% of the time, you'll, you'll be looked after. And I mean, generally, if people can't find an answer, they, they like to go and find out as well. So don't be scared to ask for help or advice, or just to show you how to do something. No matter really how silly it is. Now, I remember my day one, I didn't know how to open up a curtain. <laughs> he may laugh at that. You know, it sounds silly. Now, I laugh at it myself a little bit. <laughs> I didn't know how to open up a curtain. But honestly, I didn't know how to open up a curtain on day one. When I was a novice driver, I asked and I got shown. I mean, I probably would have sussed it out, but equally, you could damage equipment if you do not know what you're doing with it. And to do it properly as well, that's the other thing, you know, being a professional. And partly being a professional is being able to ask, having the confidence to go, actually, I do not know how to do that, or I'm not too sure what to do here, I'll ask. I still ask, oh, if I get to the new customer site, I'm like, where do you want me? <laughs> you know. Because, you know, in the industry, people take you for granted and think you have a magical ball in the cab and you know everything. You don't. So, so have the confidence to ask. And there is other big mistakes people make as well, but that's my top five. And as I reiterated in the middle there, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a novice, or really experienced drive, this can conflict to all of us. Overconfidence, especially to the experience, you know, and complacency. It can def that's where it can afflict most. Because, you know, you think you know it all. You know, you think you know what you're doing. You know how to, you know, cut corners and, <laughs> you know, it's not worth it. I'm going to tell you a quick story, which, well, it's not a story, it's something that happened to me the other day. No, it was actually a life or death situation more or less and this all falls out from complacency and not knowing your vehicle li limitations and maybe a few other points as well i was coming down by a quarry you know i'm not gonna say which quarry it was i'm not gonna try to you go judge who what type of driver it is from this anyway don't i'm trying to stereotype them as best i can so i want to add that in here let's say there's a rigid driver you know, he was waiting to pull out. I was coming down the hill on that A road, my right away, you know, long straight piece of road. He must have seen me come down this road. Now, I'm fully laden, you know, coming down, not a massively steep incline, but still a hill. You know, so it's national speed limit. I'm doing about 45, up, gaining up to 50, because I've just come up the hill. And now coming down, I saw him waiting at the junction to pull out. You know, I didn't see the indication to turn right, he was actually going to turn left to go my way, and he pulled out on me. Literally pulled, this is within 100 metres as well. And I had a very difficult decision to make here. Bearing in mind, situation was I was coming down the hill, I was ready on my exhaust brake already coming down this hill to keep within the speed limit and not exceeding my vehicle's capabilities. This might be interesting. Sorry about this, guys. I <laughs> know I'm disturbing the story, but as you can see, it's a bit, wee bit tight for here. Yeah, it's okay. We're all good. We're all good. Thank you very much. Sorry about blocking the camera, just acknowledging the other car driver to say thank you very much. Yeah, so coming down the cells on makes all speak, keep control of the vehicle ready, and this is before we pulled out. You know, being a responsible thing, keeping within the speed limit and the vehicle's capabilities and road limitations. And he pulled out on me, well within 100 metres. 
I instantly went onto the brakes. I didn't go full, full emergency because I was under several factors here. If we went full emergency, we're fully laden tanker. Down the hill. And it was a bit like this. You know, a little bit wet down below. Good chance of a jackknife or something of that nature would happen. And I would probably still gone into him as well. But I was on my brakes, I was applying my brakes, going as much emergency as I could reasonably do so. I had, I suppose you could argue it's four options. The fourth option would be to slam on as hard as I could and hope and pray that nothing bad would happen. But I know out of experience that is not what I should do. The risk is just as high as the other, well, the other options was to go into them. I believe that was one of the options. It's the ultimate option, it would it would have killed me, no doubt. You know. Uh, the other, the third option would be to veer off left up the bank. Equally bad decision, because that'd still be an accident. My life could still be at risk, you know, let alone others as well. And the fourth option, what I chose to do was to veer off right onto oncoming traffic. Luckily there was nothing coming. I did check as well, I must add. I wouldn't have veered off right if there was something coming. They don't deserve, you know, to be put in that danger either. No, that would have been a big no-no if somebody was coming. But I chose that because it was the best best of all, all the options. And yeah, we re-corrected. <laughs> Do, 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 all good. You know, it was the best of all options at the end of the day. And what went wrong in that situation with the driver pulled out? You no, know, he should have done his checks. You know, he was probably complacent. He probably didn't know his vehicle limitations. Because how he pulled out, well, he must have thought, I must be driving a car or something, surely. You know, I can accelerate past up to speed before that big massive arctic comes down on me <laughs> or he'll be able to stop in time <laughs> which yes would be breaking some of the road he's already broken a load of road regulations already and i only wish my sat my dash cam was working because that situation I, i've only reported one other truck driver in the past once before and that was that and the only time they would ever report a fellow driver is if they had exceeded a situation of safety. You know, in terms of put my life or others at paramount risk. You know, I can brush off a lot, trust me. I'm, I'm not saying I'm a whistleblower, but at the same time, that's my criteria. You know, you've got to do something really special for me to report you. You know, <laughs> you, you've made serious note. <laughs> I know they expect that from any professional driver, you know. Yes, if a driver made a simple mistake, fair enough, you know. But that was not a mistake or a, a simple mistake. That was a knowing decision. He had to make a decision. There's no, de you know, there's no reason. He couldn't have missed me, you know. <laughs> I mean, if he missed me, there's something really gone wrong. You know, because I had my headlights on everything down the hill. You know, there's no way he could have missed me. You know, big massive Arctic, it's a straight road, you know. <laughs> but never mind, I'll go off that story for now. But it brings out some principles, as I said. You know, it brings out... It's very com complacent, probably, with what he's doing. He also did those vehicle uh, limitations and his capabilities. It's only proven that. And, you know, probably some other points as well that I should probably touch. But, you know, it sums it up. I've made mistakes in the past. We all make mistakes. You know. But I try not to make the mistakes. You know. We're all not infallible at the end of the day. At the same time, you know. I don't claim to be perfect, I must add. You know, I'm not a perfect driver. I make errors now and again. You know, but I try my best, you know, to improve myself. 
And I think that's another big bit of advice I would give. It's just always aim to be better. Always aim to learn and prove yourself. You know, there's always room for improvement, as they would say. Always is. If you think there isn't room for improvement, <laughs> you're becoming complacent. That's why complacency is number one in my book. Depending on how you look at it. But it does fall into a lot of areas that cross over it. That lead you to be complacent as well. And, you know, if you have any other points, feel free to add them down in the comment section down below. You know, if, I'm, if you feel that actually this is another big point, add it down below. You know, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? You know, if so, tell me why. You know, why don't you think it's a big mistake? You know, and I have added, look, you know, I'm not perfect. We all make mistakes, you know. Let's get up into power mode. So yeah, so I'd like to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers. As I always say, I know everybody says this, but seriously, thank you very much for watching the channel and showing support towards the channel. Yeah, very smart idea, Mr. BMW. <laughs> Overtake on the solid right line. Lucky nothing's coming the other way. Um, but yet again, you know, a massive thank you to everybody who watches the channel and those who subscribe. I am contemplating some merch. I actually have got somebody who's got in touch with me recently about it. So we'll see on that front what comes about if anything does. Um, anything else to add? Nothing else really. There's going to be a few other videos like this aimed for basically everybody, but also the you know new truck drivers. You know, because it's kind of handy points to take on. Because it's one of these jobs that you can become very complacent at. Because you're by yourself. You know, you you have to police yourself in this job. You know, to be able to have the balls to go actually improve on that point. Need to work on that. Wake up. Come on, we'll do that better. You know. <laughs> So yeah, so yet again, a massive thank you to those who haven't subscribed, feel free to hit smash that big red subscribe button. Also, go and check out my Instagram and also my Facebook. As I always say, I'm more active on Instagram. It is there I'm working on my social media, so just bear with it, as I say. I'll get there eventually, hopefully. <laughs> Through the corner. So yeah. So yet again, thank you very much for watching. Over.